2023 ECD. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Anderson? Here. Mr. McKinnis? Here. Mr. Schaefer? Mr. Harris? Here. Mr. Harbsmeyer? Mr. Wright? Mr. Baird? Here. Mayor Isbell? Here. Ms. Templeton? Here. <clears throat> All right, you have six present, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> All right, I everybody probably received a copy of the agenda for today uh, any changes if not i take a motion for approval of this so thank you Ben. second thank you archie all in favor all, right. all opposed thank you no citizens or delegations here okay the minutes for our last meeting which i forgot so the, does any anybody have any questions on those minutes if not, I hear a motion to approve. So moved. Move. Thank you, Archie. Second. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Financial report. If you look at your sheet, look at that balance sheet detail report. You'll see up there that we closed the account completely. Now, a little bit. <coughs> uh, Simmons got everything. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything is in Volunteer State Bank. Also, the interest has gone up tremendously from what we were getting. Uh, in the investment pool, we have $761,000. Total checking and savings is $4,574,000. It looks like on the other sheet with the budget versus actual that we're in line pretty much with what we should be. Thank you, Carolyn. Anybody have any questions for Carolyn? <clears throat> All right, do I hear a motion for approval of the financial report? So moved. Thank you, Ben. Second? Second. Thank you, Archie. Okay, Mike. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so first, uh, our newest member, Teddy Baird, he comes from uh, Portland. He is a career firefighter, been in the service for over 25 years, I believe, serving at Gallatin and now Portland. Uh, so I think that uh, he will bring quite a bit of experience from the uh, user end of the, uh, of the fire side, uh, just like Mr. Harris has done for, for many years. So I want to uh, welcome him and, and, uh, to the board. <clears throat> uh, let's see, so for the director's report, uh, a couple things I want to bring up is uh, we received an invitation from Metro Nashville a couple of weeks back to join in a fiber ring. Uh, this was initiated about a year ago between or among Metro, Brookwood, and Williamson County. Basically what they wanted to do was they wanted to get together and use existing fiber lines to connect their PSAPs. In the event that there is a failure or a fiber line that's cut, they can piggyback off of their neighboring PSAPs, and that way they can still run non-emergency calls. Uh, that this is something that was uh, implemented up in Pennsylvania many years ago. Uh, I think there are about 13 counties that are served by this same purpose. So Metro decided they wanted to do that, especially since the, uh, the national bombing. <clears throat> they did a, uh, a test call a few weeks ago and it is working. So that's when they decided they wanted to extend the, uh, the invitation to us in Robertson County as well. So we have a call set up next Monday to get some more information on that. Uh, Christy Davis and uh, Rachel Payne from uh, Robertson County met with Steve Martini, who's the PSAP director in Nashville. Um, and uh, this is, I think this is gonna be a fantastic opportunity for us for some, again, just more redundancy. Uh, whereas right now we're only looking to piggyback off of other PSAPs for non-emergency calls. This has the, um, the availability long-term to run 911 calls or internet service or, or countless other things. But uh, starting small, we're gonna, we're gonna look into the possibilities. Uh, startup costs are probably gonna be very, very little. Uh, that's one of the first things that I asked Mr. Martini. Uh, he says they're not out any money right now except for what they paid the Mission Critical Partners to, to basically be the, um, the coordinating uh, entity on this. So we'll give you some more information on that as that, as that comes to pass, but that's a good opportunity for us. Um, and I think that uh, that was about it for my report. Uh, everything is going well, no issues. Uh, our uh, refresh is moving along. We have a, a date scheduled 
for April 4th as our phone cutover. Uh, we have been testing I-3, which I sent you out a, a newsletter, uh, I think about two months ago, from the State Emergency Communications Board that sort of detailed some things about I-3. Uh, we won't see a huge difference immediately, but that's the, the push for next gen is to go I-3. Uh, there are, there's some other components that you have to have with that, phone system, recorders, um, your CAD has to be compliant and all those we are moving towards. Actually, we just bought a new recorder system last year That's, that is uh, I3 compliant. Our phones will be I3 compliant and we passed through testing last week uh, for us to become I3 compliant. So we're, we're in good shape there moving, uh, moving our technology forward and our availability forward also. Uh, and that is it from my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <clears throat> Mike? Mr. Mayor, do you have anything to report? No report. All right, thank you. Director's report. Okay. Um, currently, we have a staffing shortage at eight. We have three offers that we've made to candidates that will start on March 27th. All are pending pre-employment uh, testing. We had another offer that was made to a candidate that can start on April 24th, and that's pending pre-employment testing as well. We are still reviewing applications to fill more vacancies in April. We're looking to hire possibly a total of four, so we have three left. Um, one expected departure on March 21st, and with the departures and the new hires, it will bring the shortage to six by the end of the month, and that's if everyone continues progressing and training like they should. Um, the other thing that we have is our March 3rd storms. Our team did a phenomenal job handling the call volume that we received that day and getting units dispatched to the appropriate places. We received 1,448 calls from 12, from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. when we average on daily about 853 calls a day. Um, 341 of those calls were 911 calls. And um, I think that's all that we had to report on that. Then I wanted to remind everyone that uh, we have TC week coming up. It will be on April 9th and it will go until the 15th. We love to see new faces. So if you'd like to come in and hang out with our TCs and just say, hey, you're doing a great job. They really appreciate visitors and we'll have food and stuff that week as well. So you can come and eat with us. That's all that I have. Thank you. You're welcome. Felt like I got that many calls over my office from 12 o'clock to 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Old business, mm -hmm. Mr. Guthrie. Uh, it's actually yes, a telephone. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. I didn't introduce Missy Beal. I don't know if everybody knows her. She I'm is sorry. the Hi. office manager for the ECC. I think Christy and Amy are at a TIES conference this week. So, yes, sir. Uh, so Missy is filling in with the, uh, the report there. <clears throat> Uh, I want to echo, they did a fantastic job. Uh, I've, I've always seen the outside uh, of the PSAP during uh, a crisis, an emergency. So I, I know what happens out there, but I've never seen, never been able to see the inside of a PSAP during an event like this. Um, I'm talking about organized chaos. Uh, this was it. Uh, people jumped right in there. They knew exactly what they were supposed to do. They answered calls. Um, I was standing by Michael O'Neill, a telecommunicator, when somebody called in and complained, I believe on 911, uh, that their hamburger bun was too hard. And this was during the storms. Uh, but to take calls like that and have patience and then just, just being bombarded, uh, they did a fantastic job. So uh, uh, hats off to you all for what you were doing there. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> old business. CAD and RMS uh, brought this up to the board, I believe in January, maybe at the October meeting, that we're having some issues with our, uh, our CAD and RMS vendor central square. Uh, one is the, the, the pricing uh, that they continue to go up on. Uh, the level of support uh, that we get is sometimes delayed, and uh, we've had that central square for several years. Uh, in addition to that, I think it's, it's incumbent upon us to look to see what other options are available every, every so often, just to make sure that one, we're getting a, a good deal, but, uh, but more importantly, that there is not some vendor out there that doesn't, already, that doesn't have something that would better serve us and our, our community. So uh, we went, uh, we've spoken with our client agencies who have also had some issues, especially on the law side, not so much the fire side. 
but on the law side, the law agencies have had some, some issues with, with um, the service that they're getting from Central Square. Had everybody put together what they felt that they need on uh, for a, an RMS product as well as a CAD product. And we put that out uh, as a request for information to find out what this would roughly cost us to get some budgetary estimates. The estimates have come back from five vendors, anywhere between uh, 1.1 million and 2.3 million dollars for a CAD and RMS, a new CAD and RMS system. <clears throat> I believe in 2016 the board paid for uh, the RMS program implementation fees for each agency, each client agency that wanted to take part in that. And then the maintenance fees were the responsibility of each department going forward from that. <clears throat> Now, um, I, would, I think we need to, to continue to look at different RMS and CAD vendors and see if there's something out there that's better, uh, more economical. Uh, we might find that what we have is, is the best product. We might find that what we have is, is the best price. Um, and sometimes those things are not synonymous, as, as we all know. Uh, but uh, I would like the board's direction on how we should proceed if we find a CAD and RMS vendor that provides us with what benefits not only our PSAP, but our client agencies as well. What's, what's the board's will on funding that, if, if at all? Any comments? And I'll be happy to entertain any questions that, that you have to help guide you in, in making a, a decision. Mike, when you're looking at these people, I mean, you, I know you're looking at more than just price, right? Yes. Can you call other agencies that they maybe have worked for and, and get some recommendations or feedback from them about how they've been doing? So we've done that as well. <laughs> the, the vendors that I previously pulled in and just sent out the, our specs and asked for just information, just a budgetary estimate, were vendors that either I've seen at a, at a conference or that I know a, another agency has and, and uses. Now, what we, what we want to do first, to speak to your, your point about the price, we want to make sure that our client agencies are, are getting what they need. That's why we, we put those in the specs. Uh, and then we send that out and, and for the most part, uh, the vendors we've talked to so far can, can provide most all of those specs. <clears throat> then we go forward with the price. Uh, and, and talk about that. But my, my plan, what I would like to do is, I don't care if we have to interview 100 RMS vendors and CAD vendors. We have to do our due diligence and find out other agencies that are using those. And we can't just say, you know, can't take the, the vendor's word for it. <clears throat> my, what I want to do is go to the, uh, the particular PSAP that's using that, that CAD system or uh, a police department that's using an RMS system and find out what their the strengths and weaknesses are, you know, what kind of customer service interaction that they had. Um, there, there has to be, this is a huge undertaking, admittedly, and I, I think we would fail ourselves if we didn't take a lot of time and do some due diligence and, and do as much as we can to find out what's good and what's bad about a, a, the, the top three CAD systems. Um, and again, I, we, we may find out after the process that, that we're better off with what we have today. So. We're, we're, yes, we're going to do our due diligence yeah. and, and visit and find out and what other what other agencies like and don't like about their system. So you're going to make, bring back in a recommendation to us on what you find, or if that's the well, of course, yes. Uh, I I want to bring back to you what we find, whether it's uh, the the top three or it's the pick of the of all the client agencies. But <clears throat> if the board knowing what the preliminary estimates are between a million one and 2.3 million I, I don't I don't want to go forward and, and give any false hope to any client agencies or waste our time if the board is not willing to to provide some direction on what they want to fund what you want to fund. where, where are we at on the budget wise where are we at on that scale now you're you mean what is it costing us mm -hmm. The maintenance fees for Central Square, just for just what I pay, which is for the ECC, was three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars, I think. But they also charge other fees for uh, implementation. So right now we're trying to implement Rapid Deploy, which is a, a free, um, it's a free service that's provided by the state board. 
Um, but Central Square wants, uh, I think, like $1,500 just to, to, for a project management and implementation fee. Um, and, and I know that sounds minor compared to 365000 The point is they, they charge fees for just about everything. Uh, I think the last <clears throat> vendor that we looked at, uh, Civic Eye, uh, they charge an upfront fee for interfaces, and, and that's it. There are no other interface fees that are, go along with that. And I think that for what we would pay, uh, their their uh, maintenance fees are significantly less than what we're paying Central Square. Um, yeah, again, the, the upfront cost is, is pretty significant, um, and, and the maintenance fees um, are are not cheap. Also, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, this this is expensive stuff, expensive software to maintain. Um, you know, there's there's no doubt about that. And, and we want we want the absolute best that we can get. Um, but, but just know that it is pretty pricey as well. Is that 1.1 to 2.5? Is that up front to get it started? That's the, yes. That, those are the implementation fees yeah. uh, to get the um, get all of the data migrated from our current system to the new system uh, and install the software. That also includes <clears throat> the implementation fees for all the mobile mobile devices. Uh, like, I don't know, Gallatin probably has 70, I think. Maybe Hendersonville has around 100. Uh, that includes those fees to get them started. It does not include the yearly maintenance fees that those departments would have to incur on their own. So this this is a, uh, once you pay it, you get it. That's That covers everybody in law for RMS and everybody for CAD and the CAD system that goes in the ECC. Is there a reoccurring fee year to year on that? Yes. Um, I think every vendor is going to have a maintenance fee that will be associated with that. Uh, if it gives you any, I'm, I'm reluctant because I'm going by memory here. I think what I read in the minutes from 2016, the, the RMS um, and I believe CAD program that we purchased was $1.6 then you have the yearly maintenance fees on top of that. Like I just told Mr. Baird, where last year we paid about $65,000. Now, if you consider our, our budget, our operating budget is what, 1.5 million, I think. Um, yes, our, our budget this year was 1.5 million. Uh, a third of our budget was scheduled to go to maintenance fees for Central Square. That doesn't include maintenance fees for your recorder, um, for your telephones, um, yeah, AT&T, that's, that's a third of your yearly budget. Well, I don't, don't you think, Mike, when, when you start getting these bids, don't you think that they ought to all be Pretty, I mean, if you've got four or five right in here pretty close, and you've got one way down here and one way up here, there's something probably wrong with these oh, two, yeah. don't you think? There could be, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, now, I think probably what the highest one did, uh, because there weren't, I mean, they're not definite specs from, from each law enforcement agency. And we're, we're sort of unique in that we have, uh, what, 13 agencies for which we dispatch, but uh, you have the, the five municipalities, the county, um, so you you have quite a few variables in there. So I think probably what the highest one did was he said, okay, we're going to quote you on the high end, I see. Uh, as opposed to us giving you you know a 1.5 million and then come back, you take us and it's you know two million. Yeah. So I I do respect that and I appreciate that. I, I'd rather overestimate yes, it than sir. underestimate it. Um, a suggestion <clears throat> we can revisit this at the at our next meeting which will be when we need to vote on the budget anyway uh, and we'll have some more vendors that we've looked at and talked to but but again if I well I'll do respect I just don't want to go forward with it if the board will not entertain the potential of, of looking at a uh, our, our funding an RMS and CAD system and another point to, to make is are we going to continue on with the board purchasing the initial program of RMS for the client agencies and then let them pay the maintenance fees going forward? Be 
is what I'm saying. So. Yeah. And that's what we've done in the past, right? In talking to Mr. Schaefer, <clears throat> Uh, he made the agreement to purchase the, uh, the RMS system for the client agencies um, in, in lieu of um, just, I, I don't, it, it is tied to 911. I mean, there's, uh, when the 911 call comes in and you dispatch them, well, you, you dispatch them through RMS. Um, <clears throat> somebody calls the ECC or calls 911. Uh, and an officer on the road or uh, a medic or firefighter says, can you check the call history at this address? They use RMS for that. So it, it is tied to 911. Do we need to wait till we get ready to do the budget before we do this? Or do we need to have a special meeting just for this? Or? Um, I, I think to to appropriate a, a certain amount. Um, you would want, you would think you'd want to have this included in this coming budget beforehand. <laughs> we we will, but again, I don't, uh, it, it's it's a big project, yeah. and I don't want to, um, I, I don't want to go through with, again, with, with interviewing the vendors or, mm -hmm. or even putting it in the budget if it doesn't sound like uh, the board would even entertain that. <clears throat> What's the will of the board here? I think, I want to go back a little bit to the square. That's the people, right? Mm -hmm. That's the one we have now. So your main concern with them is maintenance and not not being available to get stuff fixed quickly. The the um, customer service yes. is, uh, in my opinion, lax. Uh, it's it's not always... <laughs> Very quick and that's across time. the board. That, that's just not with the RMS, and that's just not with CAD. It's across the board. Any anything they do is. If we call them for a 911 outage, they they're quick to respond. But if we, like I, I think I've been waiting for a couple of weeks on a, a response for um, uh, an interface from them. Um, there have been some other things where there there is a significant delay. Okay, um, there was a program. Um, Missy, help me out with this. Uh, it's not initial assign. Uh, there was there was some program that the police departments were using. Uh, it was a, a search function. I, I forgot what it was. In our budget, and we pay for this part. The maintenance on that was I think around ten thousand dollars a year just for that. So when I I got here, I found out that they that I think Gallatin Police Department had put in a ticket through Central Square to have that fixed in like two thousand eighteen or nineteen. Um, as of late last year, late 2022, hadn't been fixed. Nobody can use it. So my question is, why are we paying for that if it's if it's not being if it's not operable? Um, so I made some calls to Central Square, had some, some <coughs> conversation with them, uh, and I got them to refund us twenty six thousand dollars for maintenance fees that we paid for stuff that that isn't doesn't work. <clears throat> well, why does it take three or four years to get to get that fixed or get that resolved? Um, so it's, it's things like that that, that concern me. And, and again, in, in just the very least, let's, let's see what else is available and see if there's something that, that is a better fit for us also. And on them bids, did it have the maintenance fees for those companies? Some of them was cheaper than <coughs> what they were paying now? On the budgetary estimates, yes. yes. Some, were, some were cheaper and some were more expensive, yes. I don't want paper or something if you're not getting good usage out of it. I mean, it's. <clears throat> um, would you like to defer it and um, let us come back with some more estimates uh, and take the next couple of months to think about how you want, if you want to fund it, how you want to fund it, uh, whether that be pay for it all up front or say that the. Um, uh, the individual client agencies are responsible for that. Would you like? We will get a big pushback on that point. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I, I think the thing's a little bit different. Uh, you know, people want to look at a precedent and see, you know, and go by the precedent. Well, to me, a, a precedent, a, a precedent had to be set after another precedent was set. Mm -hmm. So things change. So I, I get that. 
Um, but our client agencies, we, we do serve them, and an RMS system does help telecommunicators as well uh, as the, the first responders on the street. So I will say that there is a benefit to the ECC by having a quality RMS system. I can definitely attest to that because it's how we search for um, anyone that's been in our system, if they've had any involvement with the law at all, or if they have any type of history, criminal history, then it will automatically pull it up and it makes it to where it can make it safer for our first responders to respond, <clears throat> know what they're getting into. Well, can we just kind of move forward with it, Mike, and let you get some more bids and just maybe bring us the ones you, that look best to you? And then, let it, and then maybe we can figure yeah. out. And also, we pay are you going to check with the people that's already using the ones that you're getting yeah. bidded on? If there's places that you can check that's using it. Absolutely, yes. Um, so I, I want to be careful about how I presented the the or the, the specs out there. Uh, I didn't want this to appear that, that this, this was an actual bid or anything like that. This is simply a budgetary estimate where there's no obligation for us to, to take any uh, of the top lowest, lowest bid or anything like that. Right. So we can continue to, to send out um, the uh, request for budgetary estimates and, and legal may tell me something different than, than what we're doing currently, but um, but we will continue to do that and bring back what we, what the client agencies feel as though are the, the, the best three um, uh, vendors for what we need. I think still we're, we're obligated to put this out for bid unless we can get a sole source, but I don't, oh, yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't see that happening necessarily. I think it'd be good to know the comparison of the issues, the features, what, what the alternative is versus what we have. What we have essentially is the baseline and, and then compare with that uh, and see. Obviously, we don't want to take low. I've been on the board long enough to know, remember, we took low price on building the- Amen, <laughs> bro. <building the facility. laughs> that did not work. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, but that's, that's the kind of thing I think, you know, you know we'll understand is, is your, your input of comparing here's A and here's B, um, even if it, or A, B, and C, what, whatever, however you want to present it. Yes, I think then that that would would understand the features. I know the I know uh, I know what you're saying about knowing what the history is is a is a is a very vital thing. So you, you hear that with you know you hear that in the news all the time mm -hmm. when an officer goes out and and there's somebody that's a problem and they didn't they didn't they didn't have benefit of that and that. That's when we get down to that kind of thing, that becomes priceless. Yes. yes. And I can tell you, this is not a, a quick process. Um, everybody I've talked to says that just the implementation is somewhere around 14 to 18 months. Um, I went to Mount Juliet Police Department, which is only dispatches the police department. Um, went over there and saw a demo from one of the folks who sent us their estimate. Uh, Tyler Chandler, who's the captain over there, it, he is very thorough, and it took him a year just to settle on one this one uh, vendor. Uh, and then on top of that was the the year to year and a half of uh, of implementing the project. So, you know, you're you're talking potentially two and a half years before you're you go live uh, from the time you start looking until the time that you, you go live. So. <coughs> Get some more uh, bids or some more estimates. Some more estimates is what. Is so everybody you know, a motion, or do we need to make a motion for this? Or are we I, at that point to do that? I don't think you're. The point is basically just providing guidance right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Move forward. And then just, just to see if the board is open to potentially spending up to you know a, a couple million dollars on a on an RMS and CAD, yeah. not committing, just saying that you would look at that, you entertain that. So. Okay. All right. that? All right. All right. All right. Can I just say a couple things real quick? 
I think you've done a great job in figuring out what you want. Just make sure you've got a fine line between that and whatever bid process you end up doing. So get that curtailed as tight as possible. And then obviously David's going to be a big help in making sure you jump through those hoops fine. And as far as the motion and stuff, I don't know if y'all want to keep this as old as an old item on the agenda. If you do, you can do that or just consider this still discussion like, like the mayor said. But that's all the input I got. Okay. We'll be talking, I'm sure. So I'll, I'll get some more advice from you. <laughs> I'm <that>. sure. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> ECC cameras uh, brought this to you in October. Uh, the ECC is looking at uh, purchasing some more cameras for the floor uh, for liability reduction uh, for investigation purposes also. In October, I'm sorry, in September, they reached out to the county's current vendor, which is Corson. Uh, we got two quotes for <clears throat> for camera systems there. Uh, one quote was thirty three thousand thirty three one ninety seven. Uh, another quote was forty two four seventy one. Uh, I do think it's important for them to have adequate um, camera equipment within the ECC where they can conduct their investigations uh, and, and again to uh, to reduce li reduce liability. Um, so I would uh, ask that uh, the board appropriates uh, an amount for increased security cameras in the ECC. Uh, when I told you about this in October, I wanted to wait until later on the, the fiscal year. I hate to ask for new money. Um, we've obviously done well on our budget at only spending less than 30% and we're what, three quarters of the way through the year. So I have money within the budget that I can move around if you would approve. I can. Is Corson the only one that bid on it? So th this wasn't a bid. Uh, and Missy, correct me if I'm wrong. Because the county uses Corson here. So they have uh, a contract with Corson. This could be piggybacked okay. off of, All yes. Right. And you could potentially do a sole source for this as well. Um, but again, I'm all about finding the best value. So, you know, we, Want to take a look and see if there's somebody else that will provide a, a good um, alternative then we can certainly do that as well how's the business been within that as far as i know it's been good uh, i think the county was with h s s HSS, but moved to corson yes and i believe we, that we get good response from corson all yeah. the things okay. <clears throat> all right um just because this quote was from september 12th um, I don't know if y'all have noticed, but prices have gone up just a little bit. So uh, the highest quote was 42000 I would ask the board to appropriate up to 50000 that, again, I can move within my budget currently uh, to pay for additional cameras at the ECC. Your motion? So I'll move. Thank you, Ben. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Isbeth. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Audit, uh, I don't have books back yet. The auditor called me last week, sent a letter. Actually, they sent the, uh, the draft audit. Um, did I send that to all of you all? I sure hope I did. Uh, put that in an email. Anybody get it? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, there were no findings on the audit for uh, fiscal year ending 22. We talked about this uh, last year because Lehman Lemon had um, sold out to Blankenship, and uh, we had to go with Blankenship because it was late in the year. Uh, between now and May, I do want to go out and get some more quotes from other uh, from other auditors to see that we're make, making sure that we're getting our best uh, uh, best bang for our buck. Uh, also, I, I looked on the comptroller side just to see what other who other districts are using. Uh, as, as we all know, this is sort of a, a unique position to audit, so um, we want to make sure that we get somebody that knows what they're doing. So I'll bring that information back to you. In May, now I'll be um, a motion to approve the audit, or if you want to wait to get the books in hand. What do you think? This is my you know, you know, way we get the books. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> we'll move through quickly. Uh, budget adjustments. Uh, language interpretation has uh, gone way up this year, so I need to move uh, two thousand dollars from. 4427 to 4430 if you would so approve. I hear a motion. motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you, Archie. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, ECC training and testing. <clears throat> uh, the ECC is looking to get CALEA accredited. And I've got to look this up again because I forget it every time. CALEA is the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies. It's a nationwide uh, uh, recognized organization. I think Gallatin Police Department is uh, CALEA accredited. Many other agencies are also. Communications districts, um, Knox, Hamilton, uh, and Davidson, uh, right off the top of my head, are CALEA accredited. Uh, this goes a long way for also reducing liability. It streamlines uh, and, and spells out uh, best practices for uh, government agencies to use. Um, I think this is a, a, a fantastic endeavor that Christy has chosen to, uh, to look at, uh, but that comes with a cost. Uh, and she's in the middle, or she's right at the beginning of submitting her budget to the executive committee and to the county also. Uh, I would like to ask that in the next fiscal year that we appropriate $35,000 for testing for the ECC. And this testing will go towards uh, Critical, which does their initial testing. Uh, it also provides for um, psychological testing, drug testing, and physical testing, which will be needed for the CALEA accreditation process. Um, again, we've, uh, we've reduced some other line items within our budget. Uh, AT&T was, uh, was charging us a few thousand dollars a month. We've dropped, dropped that back to about $300 a month, and there were some other line items that we have dropped back also. So I think that we could certainly absorb $35,000 to go towards testing for the ECC in our future budgets. But I want to get that, I want to get that approved now, if you will, so Christy knows that she can take that out of her budget that she's submitting to the county. So moved. Thank you, Ben. Second. Thank you, Mayor. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> All opposed? All right. All right. IT support. This may be a record. Uh, length uh, of a meeting for us to go through, but I promise I'm closing out. <laughs> um, IT support. Um, the county has been, has been very good to us for IT support. We, within our interlocal agreement, we paid the county this year $100,000 for IT support. Uh, and Robert Tuttle and, uh, and his team, anytime that we call them, they come <clears> over. Um, but they also have their hands full here. <clears throat> uh, I would like for us to look at potentially hiring someone as a as an IT specialist for the ECC and the ECD. I know that we had problems before, and I certainly don't want that to to um, uh, spill over into what we could potentially do now. This would be an ECD employee if you approve. Um, this employee would would come into my office, but that employee would would know that um, the operation. Of the ECC is, is first and foremost, and of course we have IT needs as well at the at the ECD. Uh, but I think we, I think we also need to look at that. Um, but I'm I'm huge on having a backup plan, and we have to have somebody to back that person up. <clears throat> uh, I would also like to entertain the option of continuing to give the county a stipend for them to be a backup for us as well, because we, we have to have that backup. Uh, you know, if the IT guy runs out and gets, I that shouldn't be said yeah. that. <laughs> Steps out accidentally, gets hit by a bus. Um, <laughs> and, and you, you know, you're stuck. So we, we have to have that redundancy there. Uh, some preliminary figures that, uh, that I've come up with, um, I think the county pays anywhere from 65 to 85 for, um, it's, depending on the IT position, um, Knox County, actually Knox County pays their IT specialist about 65000 a year, but they pay the county itself $25,000 a year also for IT support. <clears throat> uh, I got quotes from Robertson County, I think they're 55 to 65. Rutherford County is uh, in, the, in the 60 to low 70 range. Um, so I would recommend uh, a range of 70000 to 80000 based on the projections that I got from IT, or from, not from IT, from the finance office, a, an $80,000 salary would also incur about $31,000 that you would have to appropriate for salary and benefits. So that IT position would have to be appropriated 
at the, at the larger end for $111,000 salary and benefits. So uh, I'd like the board to consider an IT position. Did you want to add into that the stipend for the, the county? And that, yes. Um, no. And, and honestly, I don't, I don't want to insult anybody. I, I, don't, I would be looking for direction on what to give the county for that, that support also. Will this person be a network specialist or will he just troubleshoot the existing system? So the network is monitored by Infranet and our current CAD and RMS vendor. <clears throat> but uh, as far as the, <clears throat> as far as the uh, what you would call that person, I've seen it all over the place. Technical specialist, network administrator. Um, it, it would just have to be somebody that, that has uh, SQL knowledge. Uh, it has to be somebody who um, um, can, can troubleshoot within the, within the servers, the virtual servers. Um, so I know with, with your IT background, I'd probably look to you for some, some guidance on what to call that person also. We, uh, we actually talked about this already. And, you know, with everything going on with our current IT department, new courthouse opening up uh, they're stretched pretty thin um, so I, I think it would be a good idea and then you know we'll certainly continue to answer the phone uh, if, if your specialist calls uh, needs any help or anything of that nature uh, Robert would still be available uh, but I, I do think it would be a good idea motion so what's the chances of us not <clears throat> paying the county their money and then our guy being a backup to them so if our guy is hired by us why couldn't he be the backup for them to help them if they've got a big job going on or got something be a backup instead of us paying the extra money out to the county so kind of help each other he could and am a big fan of the cooperation um, however, 911 funds are pretty strict, and it, it has to be related to 911. And where I, I don't think that, that we would be gigged on, you know, if something huge came up with the courthouse or you know something here that, you know, I, I could send the guy over and, and let him help. Um, I just I don't think that that we. I, I would be reluctant to say that this person is, is available to the county anytime. At all. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying like a backup. I mean, kind of, you know, if, like if our guy broke his leg, we would ask the county to help us. So right. kind of the same thing. You know, I just, that's just a, a thought. You know. I, I do like that. And, and it would save you, 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 you $30,000 out of our budget since we're having to take that initial budget to, to hire a guy first off. I, I would just be reluctant to spend 911 funds deliberately for something that's not 911 related. They're very strict on that. Everything's very strict on what you can spend this money for. Yeah. I, I do like what you're saying. Though. So, would a stipend up to forty thousand be sufficient? I think. John, well, is this what's coming to the county? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, that would be fine. Because this guy's gonna, whoever hits this, they're gonna want to take a vacation, sick time. You. I'll include that into your recommendation with a forty thousand dollar year stipend. Okay, so <clears throat> would that be up to one hundred eleven thousand for um, salary and benefits for the IT position, plus forty thousand dollars to be paid directly to the county as a stipend for exactly information technology assistance for the ECC and ECD? Yes. Okay. So we're talking 151,000? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and I'll make that, it in my box. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so 151,000, that, okay. That is 51,000 more than you're, you're paying now. And, and I, I don't foresee that being a problem with our with our budget. Just, just for I just want to make sure that we have that in there in case this gentleman or lady or whoever gets this position 
when they're out, we've got somebody we can rely on to come in and take care of the pay staff, whatnot over there. So, okay. Um, I don't, I don't think that would require any anything for the interlocal agreement to be changed. Um, I, I think that was written to to just go forward. And I, and I don't think I don't know that there's any amount that has to be changed on there going forward based on the, how that was written originally. We're going to have to get someone on the county side now to accept that offer that should be your call though because technically the interlocal agreement that, says that the ECD pays the county yeah that should be your call amount yeah. for IT support so and I, and I think that's a sufficient amount so and you know like I said we're going to be there to answer the phone we don't want the system to go down yeah. <laughs> so. can I ask a question that could potentially be legal yes sir this position you want to fill, are they going to be able to address issues that come up with these service agreements that you're going to be doing? For example, you sat for multiple years waiting on an interface. This could have been something an IT guy could have handled, but he can't because it's wrapped up in a service agreement that you're not getting. So the, the issue with the interface, there's... I just use that as an example. Sure, but sure. Only the vendor, and there's, there's proprietary uh, stipulations there that an IT person is not going to be able to handle that. An IT person, however, can handle, as an example, <clears throat> during the storms, Comcast was knocked out. Comcast is the primary provider of internet for our ECC. When that went out, mobile service for our client agencies went out from Friday through Saturday night. <clears throat> the, the mobile service allows the officers in the cars to uh, see calls, to check on scene, to, to check off scene. Uh, even the, the um, browser that is not, is a read only uh, for officers who, who don't have the mobiles to see calls and see details of calls. All that was wiped out. <clears throat> uh, AT&T is our backup, by the way, and, and that picked up, but didn't cover everything. Uh, we have since spoken with, uh, with Mike Cook from Hendersonville, and Mike is, is pretty savvy on some IT stuff, and he thinks that he can come up with a way with our IT folks to have a, an automatic switch where if Comcast goes down, then AT&T picks up all of the services, like what is supposed to happen anyway. Uh, so an IT person could take care of something like that. An IT person could... Um, when, when we have uh, faults with, uh, within the servers at the ECC, they can do a lot of that stuff instead of us having to rely on a third party that's off-site to take care of that. My only concern was you hiring somebody with expectations that later gets conflicted out because of a service agreement later. So that was my biggest concern. I, I see what you're saying there, yeah. yes. Yeah, there, there would be requirements for in uh, SQL, uh, Microsoft SQL, we use that on virtually every program that we have there. Um, but to have somebody on site that can make those adjustments, do the resets, or anything like that, uh, that's not going to interfere with any service agreements. We're not going to conflict with with um, an agreement to get us in trouble with somebody else. That's, that's a good question. They could bird dog. <laughs> open items uh, <laughs> with the vendor. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just to show something that set three years and not be attended. Yes, yeah. Okay, we have a motion on the floor by Mr. Harris to approve up to $151,000 to hire an employee plus the stipend to the county, right? Yeah. Any discussion? Do I hear a second? I'll second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't okay. hear you. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. okay. Um, and again, that's for going forward in the next fiscal year. Uh, budget committee. Uh, I would like to have a budget set up so when we come back on, what is that, May the 8th, that um, you guys will be wild about what we've done and pass a good budget so we can continue to keep the operations going. 
Um, <clears throat> would you like to establish a committee and a meeting date for that committee? Committee is typically for being <clears throat> the chairman, the director, and the treasurer. That's right. With move okay those, with leaving it like that. Move those three the same. Thank Second. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're awful quick on me. Mr. Archie has said we've been here too long. We can get Guthrie out of here. No, no, no. <laughs> <move on. clears throat> All right, so the chairman, the director, and the treasurer. And a uh, good date for y'all? Anytime after the first week of the month is okay with me. Okay. Um, is April 17th. That's a Monday. Is that okay with y'all? Mm -hmm. That's that's county commission. Oh, is it? Okay. okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it after the meeting. <laughs> you want April 18th at 7 a.m. That's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's that's fine. fine. That's fine. Uh, it's April 19th. That's a Wednesday. Is that? Oh, okay. Is April 19th okay? That's good. All right. Yep. April 19th, 9 a.m. here. Okay. You want to do it in this room? Yes, sir. That'd be fine. I'll double check just to make sure it's available. I'm Thanks. sure it is. Okay. Thanks, sir. All right. Mr. Chairman, I can't think of anything else to talk about. So. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> <laughs> Mr. McKinney, I'll entertain oh, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, sir.